Based on your suggestions, I'm going to attempt to design and animate a character all in 30 minutes. I took suggestions from you on my Instagram and they were all amazing, but the one I have chosen is Paul Leroyd. I love everything about this name. It's a play on words and even the name sounds great. I can almost imagine the character just as I'm reading it, but I don't want to get ahead of myself. That's what the next 30 minutes are for. So here's my plan. I'm going to attempt to condense the entire process of character design and animation in just 30 minutes. So I'm going to give myself five minutes of research, 15 minutes of design, and then 10 minutes of animation. And hopefully we'll have a winning end result. So first I'm going to start with doing some research and putting together a mood board using this video's sponsor, Milanote. Milanote is an amazing web app that allows you to organize your projects from start to finish on interactive visual boards with a simple drag and drop interface. It's so useful in the pre-production phase for collecting research and references for your motion graphics projects, and they've got wonderful storyboarding tools. You can choose from a bunch of templates to get started, and there are lots of variety depending on how you like to set up your boards. And of course, you can customize them to your heart's content. Updating and adding images is incredibly simple. Miller notes built in commenting, draw over, sharing, and notifications make collaboration easy. You're in total control over who can edit, comment, and give feedback on your boards. You can share a secret link to any board and there is no sign up required to view. And you can always download a high quality printable PDF of any board. Milanote is a tool that I love to use. All right, the timer has started and I'm going to start researching in Milanote. First thing we always have to do is give ourselves a bit of a brief. So what do we want our character to be? They should be charming. Polaroid sounds like a charming name. We should integrate photography into their design somehow. The character should be relatable. Good character design is always relatable. They should have a strong silhouette and their design should maybe enhance the world building. We should learn a bit about the world they're in just based on their character design, hopefully. That's what good character design has, but good character design doesn't normally happen in 30 minutes. Okay, now let's pull in some reference. Now, the first thing that I thought of when I thought of Polaroid was I thought of someone who's charming, who's a bit of a Lothario. And when I think of a charming man, I think of Paul Newman and helps that the name is Paul as well. Now my ideal Paul Newman isn't these Paul Newman here or the Paul Newman from the ranch dressing. It is Paul Newman in the sting. Now that is just a picture of a man. So I'm going to save this using Milanote's web clipper. And then from here, we can add it straight into Milanote. Now let's get a few other references of him here because we don't have much time. I'm gonna reference his features pretty closely. And we also need to integrate photography. So let's get some reference of a Polaroid camera. Here we are, these all look pretty new. I do like this image though. This shows it developing the film. So that's good. Hopefully we can integrate that into the design. This one looks great too. Let's take this and also want some colors. So let's get this version of the logo and save that so we can eye drop some colors and make our job easier. Okay, our research time is falling away very fast. So let's just put these here and we do need some swatches. So I'm gonna drag out a couple of colors that I probably want to use. I'm gonna eye drop them from this image using a Chrome extension. And then I can paste them into these swatches. Okay, I think we've got a bit of a clear idea of what we want our character to be involved with. Oh, Milan has a new draw feature as well. So we can make hand draw notes and maybe even start to sketch out our character as well. Okay, now let's go to Photoshop and I'll start sketching. All right, I've got my reference on my second monitor, which will be really helpful for this. I always like to have reference up if I'm sketching and I'm just gonna try to be really confident how much time do we have left. Oh, we've cut into our design time a bit. Okay, I'm gonna base it kind of on Paul Newman's look here, our base character. It's got a tall, thin face. Give him a bit of a mustache. Let's go for really simple eyes. Let's embellish the haircut a bit. And then that bow tie is a pretty classic look and that you know, screams charming to me. And then if we include the collar, that is a good way to cut off our design so that we don't have to animate a body. It gives it a nice line of exit, a clear place to stop. Okay, so how are we gonna integrate photography? Immediately when I was looking up and looking at our reference, I thought of one idea, what we could do, and that is to have this character permanently living inside a Polaroid like this. And then he is living inside this void of some sort of maybe polar Polaroid space. And then we've got some stars in here. And maybe everyone who interacts with him just sees this floating head 
sticking out of a Polaroid, but if you look in, you can see his body and he's got a good time going on in there. So that's one idea. But I think we can integrate something funny with the Polaroid. And that I think is maybe, oh, I don't know if I'll have time to animate this, but let's have the Polaroid coming out of his mouth. That would be great if we can have one motion where he's just developing the Polaroid. Maybe there's like a little flash. Maybe he winks and the Polaroid comes out of his mouth. I think that's pretty good. And let's actually make his eyes even wider at that point. So there's not too much animation. <laughs> that looks so silly. But here, this is animation, even though it's just two pictures. If you're an illustrator or designer and think, ah, oh, don't animate, it's hard. If you can draw two pictures looking slightly the same, you're animating. That's all they're doing over at Pixar, winning Oscars. It's just a bit fancier. They've just tightened up the images. But if you can tell a story, all you need is two images and you're an animator. Okay, we've got 20 minutes left. Let's make this in Illustrator. So let's move over to the monitor. Screenshot and paste our reference images from Photoshop. All right, let's make a bunch of layers. So I've got these here as reference. And because I am going to animate these in After Effects, I should probably separate the layers as I'm going. So let's just draw the basic shapes with the pen tool. Okay, that hair is looking pretty horrible, but we don't have time to fix that. So let's just fill in with some colors and draw his neck. Oh, this looks a lot less generic when I imagined it in my head. Oh, the sketch looks so much better. No, I want to redo that hair. It looks too much like Elvis, but there's no time. How much we got left? Oh, 15 minutes. Okay, that's not too bad. No time to change, we have to adapt. Um, let me separate these onto layers. Of course, labeling all of these, even though I don't have time, this is gonna save me time. Once we get to animating, I'm probably gonna want to have him wink. So I'm gonna draw a winky eye. Yep, that's what a wink looks like. Okay, now we need to do a second version of our head when he's <laughs> spitting out a Polaroid from his face. This is a bad idea. Okay, so in head two, we need some more anchor points. Let's say this shape, I'm gonna draw another line, which is gonna be his mouth too. Okay, so now in the second pose, he's gonna look like this, but I'll move his mustache around. We need a background. And let's get that color from Milanote. I think that purple will be good. And the red, why are we using the red? Oh, let's put that on the Polaroid. So what's gonna be on the Polaroid coming out of his mouth? It's gotta be a heart, that's sweet. Now that is a perfect heart if ever I've drawn one. Oh, it's a mess. Okay, there's his Polaroid accessory. Hopefully we have time to animate that coming out of his mouth. Oh, nine minutes left. How am I possibly gonna do this? Okay, let's go into After Effects and pray for the best. Okay, I am also going to send all of these layers to After Effects using the awesome plugin called Overlord, which I will link down in the description. And essentially it just lets you copy and paste into After Effects. Okay, I've got all my layers in here. It's probably no time to separate them, so let's just get animating. And I've got a few extra plugins in here. I normally don't show them when I have a screen recording because you don't really need plugins to do much animation in After Effects. But here I'm up against the clock. Okay, let's hide that photo and let's separate. Head and head two. Okay, so now we've got a slight bit of animation. We've got a wink and then the head shape changes. We didn't color in our ear, but that's okay. We don't need that. Um, we need to move the mustache. So let's animate its position. So it moves down here. Should also rotate as well. Make those hold keyframes. Okay, that's good. And I think after here, the um, eye should move as well. So eye should bulge outward. That'll give him a more dumb appearance. Okay, got a bit of easing. That's looking good. How much time left? Four minutes. Okay. There's enough time to animate that photo, surely. Oh, I'm gonna have to cheat. I'm gonna use the CC slant effect. There we are to just get it to line up. Oh, that's not quite working. Let's ignore that. Let's just have it moving out of his mouth at this angle and I'll figure out something. <laughs> I'll figure out something later. Of course, let's draw a mat to cover up the top half above his mouth. Make that an inverted alpha mat. And look at that. Oh, it's perfect. It's, it's terrible. It's gorgeous. Okay, I kind of, it kind of works though. Like if the point is for him to look dumb, it looks really dumb. Okay, that photo is way too big. So let's scale that down. Now the stroke width is all over the place. Oh, let's just have it go off screen. Let's lean into it, not being in a, at a good angle. You know what? <laughs> I kind of like this. Uh, that ear, we really need to fix that. So let's go in. Okay, we've got two minutes left. What are we gonna do to fix this? Let's have, 
Actually, let's make this loop. So let's copy these keyframes towards the end and then select them, right click, time reverse keyframes, and then they're gonna get moved back in the opposite direction. Apply some easing as well. And maybe a tiny bit of path animation on the head here as well. Don't need to go too far. Okay, if I can get these in before the time finishes, we should be good. All right, that's good. I think the wink doesn't work at all. So let's just remove the wink. Okay, I think that works. How much time left? Eight seconds. I think, <laughs> I think we did it. Time is up. And this is what we got. This is, this is Paul Leroyd in all his glory. Now, even though it's not super refined, I still think it kind of looks okay. Pretty similar to how we had in Photoshop, just flicking back and forth between these two images, but maybe just a bit fancier. And I kind of think that suits the vibe of uh, Paul Leroyd. It's meant to be a bit of a silly joke. So I think it kind of works that he just looks weird and the animation's a bit janky. Things that I definitely would need to fix is this mat here. You can see there's a real <laughs> bad sort of line happening here. And the limeade on this. I actually don't mind the animation just sort of falling straight out of his mouth. I kind of think that's funny. But what I might do is just continue working on this until I can get it looking a bit better. I'm not gonna redo it or redo the hair or anything. Just tweak up the motion I've got and then compare the two. Okay, so I spent another 10 minutes working on this and honestly, I'm not sure I really improved it that much. What I did change is just smoothing out the mouth motion so it doesn't jump and snap so much, but I kind of think that makes it funnier. And one thing I'm more aware of now is that I do have the tendency to overwork things. And especially if the intent of your work is to be funny and humorous and the funniness is coming from a silly face or something absurd happening, the more you try to make that look realistic and smooth and slick, the more you lose the personality and charm in it. So I think I might prefer the first version. So that's why I didn't push it too much further because I could already feel I was losing some of the charm. I do want to say that character animation can be a really intimidating task, especially pulling off something like a walk cycle. That can be very difficult if you're not familiar with sort of the complexities of how all the body parts interact during that motion. Now that's why I kept this character animation really simple, really as bare bones as you can get because of mainly the time restrictions. But I thought I would sneakily mention that in my new master motion design course, we have got two lessons all about character animation. One that goes into every single detail about the mechanics of creating this walk cycle. So if you're interested in increasing your skills in that area, this is the perfect place to learn.